Hi there, friends. Uh, I am sitting in my garage. Now, you should know I normally don't park in my garage. But I f am here today because I think I am feeling a little unsettled. Um, that's not to say I'm not trying to take care of business in the things that I can take care of, because I absolutely am doing my best. But uh, there is this kind of unsettled feeling just about everywhere. Uh, when you watch the news, when you talk to your friends, when you go about your own business, when you uh, try to manage others, when you think about what your plans might be even a few hours from now, you know that they are not going to be exactly what you had planned because you're unsettled. The world's unsettled. And this uh, pandemic is having its effect on all of us in all kinds of ways. It brings out anxiety. It brings out panic. It brings out duress. Uh, it brings out uh, people acting out in weird ways. It's all about disruption. Um, the world has been full of disruption for a long time. Uh, not just the weeks of this pandemic and the days that we have uh, been experiencing it, but months, years, decades. Uh, there's all kinds of disruption happening in the world, and it really affects uh, people deeply, especially when the thing that we think is normal is somehow jumbled up and we can't quite do it the way we used to do it anymore. Um, you, your rhythms are thrown off. Your plans are thrown off. Your expectations are thrown off. Uh, your hopes are set aside and replaced with this kind of just uneasy feeling about the world, yourself, others. Uh, and it's really quite troubling, isn't it? It's worth just identifying that. I was thinking where in the story of Jesus that puts us, and I actually came at it from the other side earlier this week um, when things were changing, you know, by the hour, and uh, cities were starting to get locked down. Uh, we were starting to do stuff here in Connecticut and even in Old Saybrook to prepare for the worst and, and what this uh, pandemic means as far as uh, social distancing and, and not just cleaning your hands, but really just staying inside as much as possible, sheltering in place, trying to avoid not only crowds, but uh, up to 10 people. I mean, that doesn't put you in a very social position, does it? It really disrupts everything, makes us all feel unsettled. Uh, so I, I came at it from the other side. The verse that popped in my mind immediately was this verse from John's Gospel where Jesus says, uh, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. So do not be afraid. And I was thinking about this verse all week. Today, I tried to go over and remember where this was in John's gospel. I forgot the context, uh, but then I found it. It's, it's Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. Holy moly, think of how unsettled and disruptive everything that's going to happen to them in the next three days is going to be. Holy, holy moly. Uh, yeah, they're up in the upper room in John's gospel. He washes their feet. Uh, they don't share the Eucharist. He washes their feet. And then um, they... He pre is preparing them for what is coming. And what is coming is going to be his betrayal, his arrest, his torture, his imprisonment. Uh, all of that, the, them mocking him and just uh, just doing all kinds of horrible things to him. And then the his mockery of a trial and uh, his execution. And think of how unsettled the disciples are going to be and he's been trying to prepare them for it and uh, they just don't quite get it but in the hours days moments that are coming for them uh, it's very 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 disruptive so let me just uh, read this little bit to you uh, this comes from John chapter 14 and it starts at verse 25, where Jesus says, I have said 
these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. You have heard to me say, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be going. I've been thinking about uh, the disruptive nature of, of what we are in, not just in, uh, you know, when it comes to shopping and when it comes to work and when it comes to our relationships and when it comes to all the things that we have to do. Uh, it also is just incredibly disruptive for what it means to be the church. Uh, after all, uh, most of us think of church as our primary gathering on Sunday morning. And then there are all the other things that we do on top of it. Uh, and my question for us to consider in this time is, what does it mean for us to be the church? Especially when we are used to this being church. Or 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 this being church. So I, I was thinking about, you know, what does it mean to be the church when we, we don't have any of those things? When we, we can't gather in the room together. When we can't gather for food and, and fellowship and exercise what I usually say is the third Lutheran sacrament, which is coffee hour. Uh, or share the peace, for goodness sakes, when we can't do that. Uh, what does it mean to be the church when we, we can't uh, gather around a table together physically and share the scriptures? Uh, what does it mean to be the church together when we, we don't have a list of events uh, that we gather for and participate in? Uh, what does it mean to be the church when we don't have, uh, you know, the liturgy or the the music we love so dearly or... Uh, those great symbols of the church, uh, or even the person of pastor who we relate to, um, you know, in the same physical space as us. Um, do we have the church? Or are we just so disrupted and so unsettled uh, that that we can't even think about being church anymore? Of course, we can be the church. Of uh, you know, our faith is so much richer than than just the stuff. Uh, but what is that about? And for me, I want to say it is, it is about community. It is about people. And we have to think about that another way, especially when everything is so disrupted and so many people, not just us, but the people around us, uh, are so unsettled. I mean, don't you think the toilet paper shortage is about that? Well, would you look at this fine looking group of people? This is the last time we took a congregational photo. Uh, we did this on April 7th, 2018, right when we finished up the building project and celebrated. We had a special guest with us. Uh, you'll see him right there using my high tech pointer. Uh, Bishop Hazelwood is right there. He preached that day for us, which was awesome. Uh, you'll also remember uh, right down here, I've got my boot on my leg because I just ripped up my ankle uh, that week. And so the bishop also presided. That's what I was going to do that day. But instead, I got to just enjoy worship and be a part of the community like everybody else. Uh, here's the important thing. It is about being together. It is about people. It is about being a Christian holy people. And that, that is what a church is. It's not all the stuff. It's not the activities. It's not all the things that look like church. It is humans. You and I, Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, has this great piece in discipleship about the body of Christ being identified 
uh, through baptism because you enter the body of Christ and communion because you're sustained and enriched in the body of Christ as you eat and drink. And it's also the body of Christ, the actual people being the presence of Christ in the world. And that's what church is all about. All right, I want to read to you quick uh, a piece from Martin Luther, our dear friend Marty, who wrote in 1539 an article titled On the Councils and the Church. We're going to get a little bit into it in just a little while. But I want to read to you these two introductory paragraphs where Marty says this. Well then, setting aside various writings and analyses of the word church, we shall this time confine ourselves simply to the children's creed. You and I today call it the Apostles' Creed which says, I believe in one holy Christian church, the communion of saints. Here, the creed clearly indicates what the church is, namely, a communion of saints. That is, a crowd or assembly of people who are Christians and holy, which is called a Christian holy assembly or church. He goes on. If the words, I believe that there is a holy Christian people, had been used in the children's creed. All the misery connected with this meaningless and obscure word, church, might easily have been avoided. For the words, Christian holy people, would have brought with them clearly and powerful the proper understanding and judgment of what is and what is not church. And then Marty, in typical fashion, goes on a long rant against his argument with the Pope. Thankfully, we're not in that place anymore. And if you think our time is disruptive and unsettled, uh, think of the 16th century. Holy cow. During the time of uh, Marty and the Reformation, the Christian holy people were scattered all over the place, uh, divided, uh, not only arguing with each other, but it, it got it got bloody and violent, uh, unfortunately. There's some good lessons to be learned in our time, especially as we're trying to be more cooperative as Christian holy people today. Uh, but in the world in which we live, that is often so divided. Uh, what it, what would happen if we just took time for each other, uh, especially when we are feeling unsettled in this disruptive world, um, and we just spent some time listening to, to where we're coming from, where that, that panic and anxiety and worry and dread uh, and, and fear all bubble up from. But anyway... In his own time, the church was unraveling, uh, particularly the relationship between what were becoming called Protestants and the churches that were still in allegiance to um, uh, to Rome and the Curia. Uh, so one of the things that Luther does in On the Councils and the Church is he identifies seven ways you can identify who these Christian holy people are. Uh, what does it mean to be the church if church is about being people of faith. Um, And ironically, I was thinking about this week because even though we are, we are scattered and we are uh, in the bunker, so to speak, I'm sitting here in my garage. um, These things still work. Um, And they think, I think uh, they can help us reimagine a little bit how we're going to move forward separately, but still try to be together as people of faith together. So the first thing that uh, Marty identifies is uh, what makes Christians Christians? The Word. Uh, the, it's not just the Bible, uh, not just the, the, the history of the church, not just the traditions, but it is a word proclaimed. Uh, think of the verse that I thought of earlier today. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. That is proclamation right at you. Get rid of the fear. The peace of Christ is with you. That's all you need. Um, And uh, so whenever that happens, whenever you see that happening, you know what? You might even see it in secular settings and you might, people doing it might not even realizing it. Uh, They are comforting one another. They are proclaiming good news to troubled hearts. Wherever that happens, you have the church. The second one is baptism. Now, obviously, we're not going to be doing a lot of baptisms when we are in a pandemic and we can't be around each other. But uh, I remember this. I used to have this little plastic card that was like the size of a 
like a credit card or a driver's license or something, a library card, something like that side, or my punch card that I have at Ashland Farms uh, for my coffee. You know, something small like that. But it was plastic. It was given to me by Thrivent, uh, and it had a quote from Luther on it. Uh, I don't know where he said it, but it said, uh, when you wash your hands, remember your baptism. So you know what? We've been using a lot of hand sanitizer, a lot of soap, a lot of water, a lot of hand towels. How about we took that time every time we're washing up because we're trying to get rid of any uh, potential contaminants, any potential virus on us, any potential body phlegm, fluids, grossness uh, from each other. Every time we wash our hands, what if we remembered that you have been claimed in the love of Jesus Christ no matter what? Be not afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The peace of Christ is with you always. I mean, hey, this is this is real stuff. Uh, the next one is Holy Communion. Now, obviously, we're also not having Holy Communion together because part of being uh, the church is sh- uh, celebrating the sacrament together in community. Uh, but I thought about this. Um, from my own life, I, I know one of my terrible habits that I have as a human being is I love, absolutely love, eating my food in front of the television uh, to the point where if if we aren't told to come to the table to eat, uh, default is to sit in front of the TV and feed our faces. Um, I have noticed something in these past days and weeks, and it has been more gatherings around the table. It has been sharing food. It has been being grateful uh, for what we have received and for the people that we're sharing this this food with. I mean, I know this isn't communion, but uh, it, it, isn't the reason Jesus gives us the Last Supper, the Eucharist, the, the Lord's Table, the Sacrament of the Altar, Holy Communion, whatever word, Eucharist, whatever word you use for that, isn't the whole idea of it is because it, it's done in a common way because we're used to whenever we're together around the table, whenever we're giving thanks to God, whenever we're engaged in community, um, it's a good and holy thing. And so what I would encourage you to to do, and I'm going to encourage me to do it too, I could use a little proclamation on this point, is uh, stop grabbing your food and just sitting on the couch and watching another episode of whatever it is you're binging right now. Uh, Pause. Give thanks to God. You know, start saying table grace again. I mean, we really get out of that really easily. Um, Whether you're by yourself or whether you are with people. uh, And if you are by yourself, I mean, you can call somebody. uh, You can FaceTime them. You can put them on the screen. I mean, there's a million ways to do that now and and still commune with one another. I saw uh, one of my friends, they live in Minnesota. They had uh, posted this picture on Facebook, and it was the grandkids... So it was their children uh, talking to their parents, the grandparents. Uh, But they were both eating on either side of the screen. And it was just really, really cool. So thanks, Ryan and Zoe, for that. Uh, You know, we be uh, be community in a different way. You know, the breaking of the bread, the sharing of the wine. Yes, it's about the body and blood of Christ. It's about what he does for us. It's about forgiveness. It's about all that. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. But it is also about a genuine humanness of what it means to eat together. And that is a good and holy thing. And if part of this pandemic teaches that us to us again in our fast-paced world, we could use that. Um, the next one, the fourth one, uh, ways that we can identify what the church is, is forgiveness. And uh, we should always take time to repent, to turn around from the things that... Uh, keep us from God and including in this time it's it's our fear it's our anxiety it's our panic it's our frenzy it's the really quite honestly stupid selfish things we do when we're worried and we act out of our own self-interest rather than out, out of God's abundance for all of humanity and all creatures in this world and so uh, yeah I mean the primary symbol of our faith uh, is Jesus on the cross for you and for me and we find God's grace and mercy and love there uh, that's offered for us think of those 
disciples in the upper room. They haven't quite experienced that yet, but they are uh, curious, inquisitive, fearful, dreading, worried, uh, acting out of their own self-preservation when they run away or when they deny him and betray him. And yet, what is Jesus all about but bringing us all back together again? Uh, the mirror story of this, of course, is when the risen Christ enters the room. They're deathly afraid. They've locked the doors out of fear that the people are going to come after them next. What's the first thing Jesus says? Peace be with you. And what do you got to eat? Um, the next one is a little bit... Uh, well, for Luther, anyway, it was a big deal. For us, it's a big deal, too, but I'm going to suggest in a different way. It is the office of ministry. That wherever you see people exercising ministry, that that is also a place you see the church. And uh, unfortunately, I think, in Luther's case, half of the treatise on, on the councils and the church is arguing over about what that means and, and who ordains who and can pastors be married. I mean, stuff that's important, but it's... I don't think the real point of what it means to be uh, Christians together. It wherever ministry is happening, we've got the church. I mean, I'm a big believer in that passage from Ephesians uh, that says, you know, the office of ministry is about equipping the saints. Um, one of the things we've done in this, this pandemic time is we. As you know, you've been experiencing it yourself. We broke up the membership list. We put people into check-in groups. We have council members assigned to those check-in groups to kind of make sure that uh, people are being attended to, cared for, thought of, uh, connected with. Uh, and then seeing that, I mean, it's not about the pastor doing all the ministry. It's about, it's about the church, the body of Christ, living out its vocation to be Christ in the world. And when we see that ministry happening, we've got we've got the church. And your neighbors, your friends, your family members, uh, the co-workers, the people classmates, the people you know who aren't a part of our community and but are just seeped deep in this fear that we're all experiencing, uh, they could use some ministry by you. You don't have to call it that. You can just care for them. But that's exactly uh, where Jesus tends to show up. And uh, it's a great, great visible sign. Uh, the sixth one is prayer or praise or thanksgiving. Now, uh, there's lots of ways to pray. I hope you are experiencing that for yourself and trying to find time. Uh, I know I've been working like 10, 14 hour days just trying to keep things organized and people tended to. Uh, and prayer has been very difficult for me. But I will also say it is a great time during this time to reclaim that. Uh, there are lots of ways to pray, but you, you can say the Lord's Prayer or something that you know. Uh, or just sit in silence and let the weight of everything that is on your mind and on your heart just pour out of you. God's listening. That's that's what this is all about. But I also like that it's this one is prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. So it's, it's also about singing. I mean, we haven't been singing. We're really good at singing. Uh, one here's a little homework assignment. What I would like you to do is to record yourself, just like I'm doing this, uh, singing a line or two from your favorite hymn or church song, and uh, share it. Or maybe you know, just it can, it can be anything. Have you seen the pictures of people singing from balconies to each other in Italy and in England and in Spain and now even in New York? I saw this beautiful one in New York. Uh, it, the big apartment buildings facing each other, people opened up the windows, and they all sang the Beatles' Hey Jude together with harmony. It's beautiful. The hymns of the church. And the last one is where we started with where Jesus and the disciples are going. You know where the people of God are, where the Christian holy people are, where the church is, when you see the cross. And the cross is not just the beautiful jewelry that we lay across our neck or it goes on top of the steeple so that our neighbors can see it or hangs above our altar so we're reminded why we are gathering there. Although all those things are great and wonderful and uh, are helpful. But what the cross is all about is suffering. And when you see people suffering 
and when you accompany them in their suffering, you are being the church. Um, in another place, Luther describes this as the mutual consolation of all believers. That's being the church. When one of our members this week entered eternal life and we couldn't gather with that family because, well, right now we can't physically do it. At the same time, I know they're being cared for and loved, uh, not just in my conversations with them, but by a lot of you. And uh, I mean, that's that's joining people at their at their breaking point, at their lowest point and sharing love with them. And there's there's a lot of places hurting. Um, I've had a number of questions from people about, hey, can we still serve people in this way? Or I've got this neighbor that needs this. Or is it okay if I go and <laughs> help that person over there? And, you know, we all have to make our own decisions about how to respect the guidelines of staying safe uh, with the pandemic on. But that is what Christians do is we help each other out and we look out for people in our community. That is how the church spread in the first couple of centuries. You know when it really did? When there was a plague and everybody else ran out of town because they were too afraid uh, for themselves and their property. And it was the Christians that stayed and buried the dead and cared for the grieving and sat with the sick. We could learn how to do that in a virtual technological way uh, and not put more lives at risk and at the same time share the love so this has been uh, great uh, you know we're still supposed to stay inside as much as possible but uh, at the same time I know it is a beautiful weekend we can still enjoy the out of doors we have lots to give thanks for uh, the church we're going to change uh, we're in the midst of it uh, I know when this is all over, we won't be the same community that we were when we began. And you know what? I give thanks for that because the Spirit is showing us different ways and perhaps renewed old ways to love and care for each other with the love of Christ. And so I share that passage with you once again where Jesus sharing to his worried, fretful disciples, peace. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. And then Jesus talks a little more. And then he says this. Rise. Let us be going.